I'm Scott Crow of OSA Outreach and welcome to Roger Williams Park Zoo. Today we're filming a video just for you guys here in Rhode Island and all of New England on a species that you've asked us so much about. Welcome to Venomous Snakes of New England. Here we're in the Northern Copperhead exhibit and also Timber Rattlesnake exhibit. Now I love showing you guys these videos, but what's extremely important is to understand the conservation of these species, especially the endangered Timber Rattlesnake. And we're very lucky enough to have any sort of exhibit like this here in Roger Williams Park Zoo to understand that and the efforts that are going on for the conservation of such a species. Okay, Scott, so what we have here, um, this is what it's all about, is, is creating timber rattlesnakes to augment populations. So I'm excited to share with you some of our babies here. Um, this is a baby that was actually born here last fall. Um, so you see they can put on quite, quite a bit of size. Um, typically they're born, they're about 24 grams, which is, is, is kind of small. It's about uh, a third of the size of this one now. So you can see that they grow pretty quickly. Um, within three years, we can get this animal to a uh, releasable size, and I'll show you one. Um, but again, the neonates, everybody, uh, you know, has quells about what neonates do and what they can't do. Of course, little rattlesnakes aren't born with a rattle. They're born with a button. Um, they can't make any noise when they're newborn. Once they shed their first skin, they'll get that first segment on their rattle. Their second shed, they'll get a second uh, segment to the rattle and then they can start to make, make noise. And it's kind of funny to listen to those little guys rattling with that tiny little rattle, but um, they know how to use it right from birth. Um, even before they get their segments, they will uh, vibrate the tip of that tail very violently uh, as if they did have their rattle. Um, so they are amazing. They're fully venomous uh, right from day one, able to hunt on their own. Um, we have seen that timber rattlesnake moms actually show some maternal behaviors. Um, the young will actually stay with mom for quite a while after birth, um, and it's her that they follow back to the hibernacula den where they will brewmate for the winter, which is really interesting. And there's, there's even videos of, of uh, rattlesnakes and other species of rattlesnakes actually you know, scooping their babies to safety underneath rocks. And this is a very new finding uh, where we're seeing this maternal care in, in, in rattlesnake species. So it's very interesting. This is a little male. This guy's going to be a black phase. Timbers come in two phases. You have really yellow ones. Uh, you have dark gray black ones. They're very vari variable in color and pattern. Uh, and there's even completely melanistic specimens, jet black ones, which are just absolutely gorgeous, uh, almost like velvet. Beautiful, beautiful snakes. Um, and again, they're fully venomous. Um, you know, some folks think that babies are a little more dangerous than the adults because they don't know how to control their venom from the start. Um, but that may be the case, but their venom is no more toxic than the adults. Um, and they certainly can't hit you with the same amount of venom that a giant uh, like we just saw could if it really wanted to. But again, and I, and I stress, venom is not for protection. It's for securing prey. They don't want to waste that precious venom. Uh, to, to bite uh, a, a would-be adversary. So, um, and you see, they're very, very calm and placid. Um, the snake's not trying to bite me. It's not even rattling its tail. Um, very, very placid. So again, this is uh, gonna be close to a one-year-old. And now I'll show you with one that's ready for release. We like to get them to about 250 grams, and that makes the snake large enough for us to be able to surgically implant them with radios because um, we want to make sure once we release these guys it takes a lot of effort and energy and of course these guys are like our children um, we want to make sure that they're doing what they're supposed to do out in the wild um, so what we like to see is a 250 gram snake and this is a beautiful and this snake's about three years old now it was born here three years ago and this is a beautiful yellow phase and this is the size we like to see them uh, get released at um, you see it's pretty good size. I mean, it's certainly uh, too big for a black racer to swallow now, so we, we like to get them beyond some of that predation, uh, get them past that predation uh, threat. Of course, a hawk could take this animal as well, but again, they're very good at blending in. The hawks can't see them. They don't move around too, too much. They like to stay pretty close to the rock crevices and hide. And again, these guys are ambush hunters too. Um, you'll see a fallen log in the woods and, and uh, these timbers will coil right next to that log and put their head right up on that log. 
because logs in the forest are, again, highways for rodents. And they could pick up those scent trails of where a chipmunk forages or where a mouse forages. And with those pits, and again, the rattlesnake, like the copperhead, is a pit viper. Um, they can detect that heat when that animal, whether it's daytime or nighttime, runs up that log. And uh, that's how these guys hunt. Um, they don't often actively seek out their prey. Um, they like to ambush it. Um, and again, they sit on scent trails, recognize rodent scent trails, whether it's rabbits, mice, chipmunks, red squirrel. Um, these are all the prey items for these species. Um, and we've even seen uh, them eating birds. Um, a lot of birds like robins that will forage in leaf litter and kick up leaf litter uh, will run into one of these guys and uh, be turned into a meal. Um, so again, this, this is a head start that uh, will soon hopefully be fitted with a radio uh, and help uh, with the conservation effort of this amazing and iconic New England species um, that will help keep it again on this planet for generations to come. Well, thanks, Scott, for bringing the film crew out and uh, letting us share our work here uh, at Roger Williams Park Zoo. Again, we're very proud here of our, our, our commitment and dedication to these non-charismatic type species. Um, and as you mentioned, you know, uh, we, we can't pick and choose what species that we can serve based on fear or speculation. And it all starts with education, you know, and, and that's why we built our exhibit and, you know, that's why we enjoy doing uh, spots like this, to just let folks know that, you know, these aren't the creepy crawlies and, you know, these are valuable, uh, you know, parts of the ecosystem. And if we were to pick and choose what species we can serve, we'd have very fragmented ecosystems that could be a danger of, of, of failing. Um, so, you know, it's important that our bicycle wheel has all the spokes in it and not just a few spokes because we want that bicycle wheel turning true. So, again, thank you for your crew to come out and uh, highlight the work of, of uh, Roger Wayne's Park Zoo and, and our commitment to, to the conservation of this, these iconic New England species. It's so fantastic. We thank you guys very much. And remember, guys, don't forget, there's always something new going on at Roger Wayne's Park Zoo.